Chapter 441, Impasse Beetles flooded out of the river and became crazier at the scent of humans. Within two seconds, the body of that poor individual practitioner was covered by bugs. The rustle of their shells was clearly audible in the underground cavern, making people's flesh creep. Panic spread through the individual practitioners as the experts urged them to kill the bugs. Those insects were far too frightening and a single bite spelled death. Despite their fit bodies, those bugs could easily inject poison into that class D expert's ankle and numb his lower leg. Under such conditions, who could guarantee his own safety? There were just too many bugs. Those nearest to the river had to take the initiative to protect themselves through any means possible. A flame shot out from a fire-type metahuman's mouth, illuminating the entire space, whose boundary blurred into the darkness. They were neither at the source, nor the mouth of the river. Insects were commonly believed to be scared of fire. However, this primal instinct of animals did not seem to be applicable to these beetles. Usually, on Earth, even ants would speed up and escape when touched by fire. Unlike them, these bugs were pouncing onto humans fearlessly. Some beetles curled up in the high heat of flames, but that acted as no deterrence for another wave, stepping into the breach from behind. There was no end to them. Before that metahuman could react, his entire body was already wrapped in a blanket of bugs. His heartbreaking howling accentuated the gruesomeness of the surroundings. As the Australian leader raised his hand, the atmosphere around him seemed to have twisted, instantly crushing all beetles on the ground. Yet, another wave was already on the move. Horrified by the sight, everyone started to retreat as they fended off the bugs with all their strength. Furious, the leaders of the big organizations roared, go on and kill those bloody bugs. But their words were not as powerful as people's fear of the bugs. While practitioners might be able to bargain for a life with humans, the insects in front of them were savage beasts that would attack them indiscriminately. The exit that they had painstakingly found turned out to be an impasse. Meanwhile, Lu Xu pulled a beetle into his seal of lands by its leg in secret and wrapped it in his divine water. Yet, almost instantly, the corrosion halted without any increase to the size of the water. Even the active golden snake swam away from the bug, as though it was too dirty to be touched. Lu Xu was disappointed. If the divine water could feed on those bugs, he would happily claim possession of the entire river. But, what a pity, knowing that the river could possibly lead them to the relic, yet they were forced back to the tunnels. Furthermore, where could they go to besides back to the palace? But that was not connected to anywhere else either. In the meantime, the leaders were racking their brains for any solutions. The only viable way now was to break through the encirclement by leaving the slower individual practitioners behind as human shields. In that case, they would be safe. Not only that, they could then proceed on with their remains exploration without worries, as long as they stayed clear of the riverside. Within seconds a silent consensus had been achieved. The Class B expert whispered, Breakthrough. On his cue, all of them ran out through the crowd of individual practitioners. Just when the latter was happy for their willingness to fend off the bugs, they soon saw through their evil plan. The Class B expert split a road among the throng of bugs through changing atmospheric pressure. They were actually breaking through in such a straightforward manner. In spite of their advantage in numbers, the bugs were not gifted with speed. Thus, they would never be caught by these beetles again. Just when the Australian practitioners were ready to embrace their newfound hope, the Class B expert was suddenly caught by the wrist. Lu Xu asked curiously, where are you going? In his struggle, the Class B realized that the person's strength was definitely not one of a rookie's. As a matter of fact, in the peak of Class C, Lu Xu was almost as strong as Class B's. The man chided. Let go of me. Then, half of his sleeve was torn with a hiss. From Arago Kingsley's distress, plus 666. Before Lu Xu could reply, he felt the depression of air around him. Arago actually intended to kill without any prior warnings. Yet, at this moment, a louder rustle came from upstream. 
it sounded like rolling waves. Everyone turned to see Li Yixiao, wrapped up in his tiger sign, running wildly, followed by a large crowd of practitioners. Behind them was a wave of bugs, sweeping across the entire area. A practitioner shouted in English, Li Yixiao. You are anti-human. Li Yixiao. You must be charged after we get out of the remains. Unable to understand their complaints, Li Yixiao only concentrated on running closely beside the river, triggering even more beetles along the way. On the other side, the sight reminded those downstream of the fearful scene of thousands of gargoyles chasing behind Li Yixiao. Run. Go downstream. We will all die if we don't run fast enough. Both the pros and individual practitioners freaked out. In comparison to the incoming bug wave, the few beetles in front of them amounted to nothing at all. Sometimes, courage could only be spurred in times of urgency. Thus, all of a sudden, everyone quickly united together and cleared all the bugs in their proximity. Usually, people were unwilling to unleash their full strength if there were other possible solutions. This was especially so in a big group where many tended to depend on others to figure a way out. With hundreds of practitioners gathered here, it did not make sense if they could not fend off those black beetles. Humanity's true potential could only be seen at this impasse. But it was none of Li Yixiao's concern. How much potential people had was none of his business. He was only interested in pushing everyone into this impasse. Chapter 442 The First Marathon Match in the Remains Every member of the Australian organization was sparing no effort in fighting off the Black Beetles. In spite of their commendable teamwork, there were casualties every now and then, as one bite could be fatal for an ordinary individual practitioner. However, strangely enough, human blood would be quickly absorbed by the earth upon contact, at an incredible speed. When they were done clearing up most of the bugs around, Li Yixiao had almost arrived as well. At this moment, Arago glanced around in search of the individual practitioner that held him back just now, but the person was nowhere to be found. Wait a minute. Arago looked downstream, only to see Lu Xu hundreds of meters away. What the hell? From Arago Kingsley's distress, plus 666. Now, everyone took to their heels while cursing silently inside, could someone please discipline this Li Yixiao? Although the bug flood was relatively slow and could not even outrun a class E, but who could deal with so many of them? To make matters worse, Li Yixiao was still roping in even more. Having recognized Lu Xu from behind, Li Yixiao quickly sped up, overtaking Arago's team. Damn you, thought everyone in the team. What could they do when the troublemaker could actually run faster than themselves? How frustrating. Lu Xu turned to see Li Yixiao waving at him. Wait for me, Lu Xu. Ha! <laughs> Only bloody idiots would wait for you. Lu Xu continued running without hesitation, while Li Yixiao shouted loudly from behind, Help me explain to that old man. I didn't mean it. Help you? Lu Xu sneered. I shall burn some sticks of incense for you. How about that? At this moment, Lu Xu ran past an exit, from which the Golden Foundation members were walking out under Ji Wei's leadership. Ji Wei's face lit up at Lu Xu, who had run past without saying a word. From Ji Wei's distress, plus 666. Ji Wei's jaws dropped in shock, but did not manage to get a word out. But something was fishy, where was Lu Xu hurrying to? His face turned pale as he gazed upstream. Li Yixiao. Bloody hell you just wait for the old man to chop you into pieces. Everybody, run. Li Yixiao was displeased. Oh, man. Your greetings are so hurtful. It's the Beatles, not me. Like hell I will believe you. F asterisk CK. Ji Wei then turned and led his people to flee. By all rights, getting out of the labyrinth was an achievement worth celebrating, but in fact, it signaled the commencement of the first marathon match in the remains on the fourth day since their entry. In the end, the deities still did not enslave individual practitioners. 
While some believed that the approach would doubly ensure their own safety, others deemed it as an act of inhumanity. As a result, the debate went on and on. Despite the long history of conflicts in Scandinavia in ancient times, they were actually contemporary doves. Therefore, as the biggest organization in Northern Europe, the deities were in fact a supporter of peace. Their internal discord between various factions could often be resolved through debates during meetings, which was much less violent than many other organizations. The collection of gods, for instance, had many records of bloodshed due to internal conflicts. A Class C frowned. I don't think it is necessary to make such a fuss over enslaving individual practitioners. Anyway, they'll be safer with us. Do you think they'll be safe if left to explore the remains on their own? Besides, other organizations will take them too even if we don't. The Class B leader pondered for a long moment before raising his head in shock. Where are those individual practitioners? All of them had been claimed by other organizations during their long discussion. Suddenly both parties let out a sigh of relief. If so, what was there to debate about? Let's go then. Same as the others, the deities were trapped in the tunnels for a long time and they were not exempted from the heart attack given by Lu Xu's wall arts as well. Things like, the relic is directly below you, class A creatures loitering 500m ahead, time machines given out for free by Doryman 500m ahead. Spare me great lord, please. But it did not take them long to find the right way. At the riverside, the triggered bugs were soon cleared up through their united and strategic efforts. At this moment, a pretty little girl suddenly emerged from the ground, which startled everyone present. She took a calm glance around and murmured, You agreed to wait for me outside the palace, but where's the palace? You've changed, Lu Shu. The palace was already gone by the time she reached the site. Hissing with anger, Lu Xiaoyu controlled Anthony to bring her down from the surface directly. When she finally managed to find the palace, Lu Xu had disappeared again. The deities were dumbstruck by the scene in front of their eyes. It was understandable, suddenly seeing a pretty girl coming out of the earth in underground remains. Besides, her voice just now was too soft to be heard. A person asked in caution, Little sis, are you a practitioner? or a creature here. Lu Xiaoyu turned and fixed them with a frosty stare. At that moment, Anthony and Johnson were on command under her feet, ready to attack any time when needed. But she kept silent for one minute, her brows knitted closely together. Confused, the deities did not take any action either. They wondered, was there something wrong with what they said or was she really a native creature? Just when they were getting nervous, Lu Xiaoyu replied in English, Can you speak Chinese? What? She frowned because she could not understand a single word in the deity's question. Now, all of them looked at one another at a loss. For some reason Coral felt a disposition to Lu Xiaoyu and she would be glad to have a chat with her. But that was impossible due to the language barrier. Despite Lu Xiaoyu's vigorous efforts in cramming herself with high school knowledge, she had never really practiced her listening and oral English skills, unlike Lu Xu. Lu Xiaoyu eyed the crowd, but had an inexplicable urge to beat Coral up when her gaze swept past her. Why was that? Lu Xiaoyu could not justify it either. In any case, she should not inflict violence on others for no particular reason. It must be because I have transferred my anger on Lu Xu to her, thought Lu Xiaoyu, since the group in front was so far still rather friendly. Lu Xiaoyu was reasonable most of the time. Chapter 443, Triumphant Convergence of Forces Lu Xiaoyu had lost her ownership of Lu Xu's clones. It had been tested and proven that Lu Xu's clones could only be materialized if permitted by Lu Xu himself, through their celestial maps. In the meantime, Lu Xu was too engrossed in his running and certainly did not notice the flickering on his map. It felt like her call was not being answered. Lu Xu must have purposely ignored her call. Lu Xiaoyu thought. Irritating. Lu Xiaoyu kicked a stone into the river, which started boiling again after the hard-fought piece. Coral. The class be leader of the deities. 
From Coral Johnson's Distress, plus 666. From Lu Xu was so far in front, in the leading position of the Grand Marathon Contest. The number of athletes was constantly on the rise as the existing crowd dashed past a few batches of practitioners, who had just made it out of the tunnels. At the moment, Li Ixiao had arrived by Lu Xu's side. He lowered his voice and pleaded, Please say something nice of me if we run into the old man. I can tell that he likes you and Xiao Yu. Lu Xu looked back to see huge throngs of people, which made his head throb in pain. With the increasing number of beetles, who knew when they would reach the end of the marathon? Lu Xu replied meanly, Shut up. I need some time alone. Rejected, Li Ixiao turned to Ji Wei. Really? It's the beetles that attacked me first. I didn't provoke them. Ji Wei raved, rot in hell. Li Ixiao bit his gum. In any case we are considered comrades in the Lao's remains? Rot in hell. Li Ixiao raised his brows. I reckon you caused me trouble the previous time too. Rot in hell. Distress crawled up from the bottom of Li Ixiao's heart. Honestly, he did not see it coming, as his initial intention was simply calling together a group of backers like how he did on the surface. Back then, it was such a success. Even the experts did not dare to pick a fight with him. However, never had he expected the bug flood to be so much bloody scarier than the gargoyles. More importantly, earlier the old man had not minded too much anyway as he was only targeting the big organizations, while sparing the lives of individual practitioners. But now, who could avoid him on this one-way route? Yet, it was still not his greatest worry, which was the fact that he really could not overpower the old man. At that moment, Lu Xu suddenly asked in bewilderment, Can you hear that rustle? Li Ixiao did not pay much attention. Isn't it all behind us? Rot in hell. Lu Xu's face changed. Hell. I'm not talking about that. I mean in front. It was not so obvious from afar just now, but the sound had grown louder the closer they headed downstream. Within half a minute, the deities came into sight as they had fled upstream. Meanwhile, Lu Xiaoyu had already managed to escape via the soils with Anthony's help, before the second bug flood appeared. She was not willing to be chased around by bugs, and she had to look for Lu Xu elsewhere. The bugs were converging with death in the air. The upstream branch was led by Lu Xu, Li Ixiao and Ji Wei, whereas the downstream by the deities. At that instant, Lu Xu was stunned. Li Ixiao. What a triumphant convergence of the beetle forces. They managed to pincer the humans and underground remains. Coral was in high spirits due to her encounter with Lu Xu. Thank God you are here too. The other deities almost cursed aloud. Is this the right time for the both of you to be flirting? As a result, they all lost hope. Where could they run to? Just fight, for God's sake. The Phoenix Society took the lead to swerve backwards. Emotionless, Howard released more than ten fiery phoenixes from his palms. The birds flapped their gorgeous yet fatal wings towards the bug tide, immediately burning the vanguard beetles into ashes. However, given their huge number altogether, the vacancy was instantly refilled by those from behind. At that moment, people realized that those insects would disperse into a wisp of black smoke after death, leaving behind a pile of rubble on the ground. But there was no time to be too particular about that. In times of a real crisis, no one, including the organizations and individual practitioners, could deny the fact that their only chance of survival depended on unity. Furthermore, this time, the remains were far more dangerous than any before. Of course, it would not have necessarily become like this if not for Li Yixiao. In fact, many big organizations had decided to complain to the Heavenly Network for sending such an anti-human expert into the remains, after they made it out. With no further hesitation, Lu Xu's divine water flooded out from his seal of lands, wrapping himself inside. As a matter of fact, Class C's had an edge in resistance against those low-level beetles. 
With their increased defense due to their armor, Class Cs would be safe from the poison of those bugs unless their armor was compromised. And Lu Xu's armor was particularly huge. Li Ixiao darted into the bug flood, his tiger sign serving as his defensive shell. Every punch from him was able to crush a stretch of bugs. Meanwhile, Lu Xu also advanced with his divine water, upon contact, it would result in the beetles burning or exploding. Those insects could not survive even a split second due to its high corrosive power. A few words flashed across Lu Xu's mind as he ran past coral, gratitude, remuneration, 500,000 euros for monthly pocket money. Lu Xu told her in English, you are only a class D, seek shelter at the back. Happiness danced in Coral's eyes. Okay. The strong and independent woman of the deities, who never accepted any form of help suddenly seemed to have changed her disposition in front of this young man. A strange feeling crawled up the deity's expert's heart to see the well-protected apple of their eyes throwing herself on a dunghill. Never mind, at least that fellow took the initiative to protect Coral. However, no one noticed the malice in the pledge leader's narrowing eyes as he saw the golden light surrounding Lu Xu. He had inquired many times about the whereabouts of his men, as their uniform was easily recognizable. He had learned that one of them was killed by a young man who had robbed Earl's divine water. Moreover, their hundreds of pieces of broken weapons were also looted by him, within the witness of many individual practitioners. This hatred must be avenged. Of course, he was only aware that one of the five class C's was punched to death by Lu Xu, and the location of the rest remained uncertain. Certainly, he did not know that they had actually surrendered themselves to Lu Xu again. Chapter 444, Nye Ting the Killer, Part 1 Courtyard, Luhai Lane, Capital Sher Xue Jin sat in idleness in the shade of the walnut tree, whose luxurious canopy stretched in all directions providing coolness and comfort for those under its shelter. Rested in his hands was a purple sand teapot and a book, which had stayed on the same page for a long while. Sure Xue Jin sat with his eyes shut, as though ruminating on what he had just read. Suddenly, Hao Chi Chao trotted over in a hurry and handed a file to Sure Xue Jin. Taken by satellite one month ago. From the documents Sher Xue Jin took out a stack of photos that showed withered trees on a Pacific island, around which countless bodies of fish and shrimp were floating on the sea surface, lifeless. The once beautiful island was now teeming with the stench of death. Sher Xue Jin frowned. Any other clues? No. No records of incoming boats in the past six months, Hao Chi Chao replied honestly. All of the details had been verified before the report. Sher Xue Jin mused. Hope that person is not on Ko Chang Island, right now. The dead island was actually a signal of ascension to Class A. Back then, during Li Xianyi's promotion to Class A, strong beams of sword energy covered a swathe of land with diameter of 10 kilometers and Luo Chang at its epicenter. Had Li Xianyi lost control, Luo Chang would have been a dead land by now. The status of all things as swords only existed in legends, and for a very long time, no one was able to achieve that even in Li Xianyi's faction. In any case, it was completely impossible to shatter the shackles of nature in the energy scarce era. In fact, Li Xianyi's training in swordplay actually turned him into a special case, as more focus on self-accumulation had been placed on his internal sea of qi and his snow mountain. Meanwhile, as for Chen Bailey, no single magical tree in a radius of five kilometers in the remains survived his ascension. At that time, he could have easily wiped out all the animals in the area too. Ascension to Class A was complete at the expense of spirit qi in nature. In order to alter one's fate, other lives had to suffer, in exchange for the betterment of oneself. Now, although the truth remained unclear, the right attitude of a big organization was to expect the worst and strive for the best. Besides, there was no reason for a newly promoted expert to miss his chance at the remains. However, there was no relevant information available as of now, testifying to the person's equanimity, should the deduction be real. A rare look of worry surfaced on Sher Xue Jin's face. Why does he hide himself so well? What is he up to? 
I hope Li Xiao does not inconvenience him accidentally. How Ji Chao's eyelid twitched in embarrassment. So you too are aware of Heavenly King Li's unpleasant personality. Have you sent this file to Heavenly King yet? Shi Xuejin suddenly asked. Yes, I have. But he has not replied to me and his phone is beyond reach as well, replied Hao Ji Chao. I see, Shi Xuejin nodded and said, I'm afraid he has already reached. Hao Ji Chao froze. Where is he? Shi Xuejin picked up his threadbound book from the stone table and sank deeper into his chair, which squeaked gently under his weight. He's probably out to kill. His voice was soft and calm, as though it was perfectly normal to associate Nye Ting with words along the line of killing. As a matter of fact, Shi Xuejin and Nye Ting were brought up together, though the former was much older. Nye Ting's master was Shi Xuejin's father. By right, exclusive techniques of the Shurs should not be leaked to an outsider, but Shi Xuejin was not born with the aptitude for cultivation. This extinguished his right of inheritance. Thus, his father adopted the orphan Ye Ting, which was rarely known by the public. Precisely due to his lack of inborn talent, since a young age Shi Xuejin had been striving to be an erudite in the three teachings so as to open up new possibilities, for those like himself. This old courtyard in Luhai Lane was bequeathed by Shi Xuejin's father too. Back then, he was still a young man and Ye Ting was still a child. Both of them were beside him when Shi Xuejin's father planted the walnut tree himself. Over the years, Nye Ting had changed. Shi Xuejin almost witnessed personally how the innocent, naive child had stained his hands with blood in the relentless pursuit of his dream. Indeed, he had too much blood on his hands. Meanwhile, Shi Xuejin would call him into the courtyard for a moment of peace after every killing Nye Ting committed. This helped to quell his bloodlust and keep him from going astray. Over the course of time, Nye Ting would stay in the courtyard himself for a few days after every kill. Honestly speaking, Shi Xuejin had never had any qualms with Nye Ting's murderous deeds. He only harvested lives from those who deserved to die. 6000 M Campsite, Southern Slope of Empty Everest, Nepal It was a great time then for conquering Empty Everest. In the upcoming month of October, weather conditions on the mountain were relatively more stable in late autumn. At the moment, the campsite was overcrowded. Colorful tents were erected across the land, and a gust of frosty wind often brought along the rustling of tents. Commercialization was a serious issue here as well. Regular exercise and some money was all one needed. Shortage of oxygen was the most severe problem for climbing world-class tall mountains. Prolonged deficiency of oxygen could lead to failures in the heart and lungs. Many climbers could not even make it to the 4000 M mark. At 6000 M, everyone had to acclimate to the high altitude conditions for one to two weeks, before they were allowed to venture even further. Conquering empty Everest was totally different from climbing up a hill for a good view of the sunrise. It was a long and tough battle. At 7200 M, humans were tantamount to walking corpses without enough oxygen, as almost all of their thinking abilities were lost. Thus, oxygen tanks were a must for modern climbers. Of course, the native Sherpa were willing to carry a bunch of oxygen tanks with you if you had the money. Oxygen deficiency was non-existent in the face of money. Many climbers at the 6000 M campsite were still in the process of adjustment. Thus, most of them would return to their tents after a short session of adaptability training outside. But one team stood out from the rest. They were totally unaffected by the high altitudes. Judging from their dark, yellow skin and thick beards on a few faces, they looked like Middle Easterners. Sitting on a stone, one of them laughed. Look, they look like they are dying when lying in their tents. I don't understand why they still come for the climb. Another person shot him a glimpse. Don't be mean. Stay focused on your satellite phone. We need to be ready all the time. We're just here to check the heavenly network. I don't believe they will really send class A's into the remains as there are so many pairs of eyes watching them along their national boundary, just like us. 
a single bit of negligence on their side may land them in a siege. But, hilariously, we ourselves have no courage to enter either, don't we? We are only here as tourists. Chapter 445, Nye Ting the Killer, Part 2 If really necessary, we may have to go ourselves. Don't lower your guard, a relatively more mature-looking person said. Dressed in a white short-sleeved t-shirt in the chilly environment, the man drew startled stares from all around. But in the times of power awakening, the presence of metahumans and practitioners was not as astounding as before. After all, sometimes they did appear on the screens too. To top it off, a movie showing this year claimed to feature real metahumans' abilities instead of special effects. On African battlefields, metahumans were even deemed as the deities. Thus, eyeing their cultivation resources, many low-level metahumans flocked to Africa as fighters. It was very normal, really. Even some big organizations had founded their headquarters in Africa to secure an advantageous place in the competition for local resources, including an abundance of magical stone mines. Some transnational metahuman organizations were formed there as well, following the same veins of mercenaries in the old times. Currently, metahumans were already able to get along well with commoners. Not acceptance, though, simply tolerance. Business and money were always the best incentives for embracing change. A member of the team had just returned from outside. The speaker just now cast him a serious look. Behave yourself. We are going back once the remains are closed. The newcomer wiped his mouth and smiled. It's always more interesting up here on MT Everest. Those women are actually willing to play with me though they themselves are panting like pigs. My goodness. You are actually doing that at such a smelly place, another person grunted scornfully. The campsite was far worse than expected. There was neither a sewage system nor toilets. Thus, feces and urine were dumped everywhere, making the site unbearably foul-smelling. At this moment, a young man in an outdoor jacket and a pair of shades steadily arrived at the campsite. He took a casual glance around the place before darting his gaze towards the Middle Eastern practitioner in a white t-shirt. He smiled. Finally found you. Usually, even practitioners would only come in groups, seldom alone. But more importantly, they had recognized the newcomer. Yet, his arrival was utterly unexpected. According to the information, he was supposed to be in the capital now. The white t-shirt leader replied coldly in awkward Chinese, Nye Ting, aren't you worried about us launching revenge together when you are absent from the capital now? Slowly Nye Ting unloaded his camping bag from his back, before replying calmly, I will already be back when other people find out. Are you openly making an enemy against the Union? With regards to the Union, are you referring to that bunch of disjointed, shattered craps? Nye Ting asked in return with curiosity, your forces are blatantly stationed on my boundaries to check mine. If I do not kill you as a warning for the rest, don't you think you may take my kindness for granted? Killing was not Nye Ting's main agenda of the trip. He wanted to convey the message clearly that uniting against the heavenly network would certainly come with a price. Nye Ting did not intend to wipe out all the experts along the boundaries. In fact, he could not finish all of them off either. It was not so easy to locate this team, but with them as an example, others would start to wonder who would be the next unlucky dog. Besides, Class A's mobility should never be underestimated. He would reach the capital when the news of his killings were received by the various big organizations. Meanwhile, the commoners around were utterly confused. Were those practitioners speaking Martian? Many climbers had come out of their tents for a closer look at the fight between these superhumans. It was probably their only chance of getting so up and close with the cultivation world. All of a sudden, Nye Ting's camping bag shattered to reveal the snowy glow of Xian Ting. Instantly, its blade cleaved mountain gusts and snow piles in halves, forming a crack along the rubble at the site. Many climbers immediately backed down in horror, so as not to be roped in as collateral damage during the practitioner's fight. Seven Middle Eastern practitioners sought shelter at once. But how could they outrun the blade? 
In the blink of an eye, two of them were already dead inside their tent. The man in the white t-shirt suddenly unleashed his strength. In a split second, all of the stones across the entire campsite were lifted into the air and were hurled towards Nyating like a tornado. Even the climbers' tents were tossed up and blown away in the strong gust of wind. Meanwhile, Nyating simply stood still, keeping all the stones around him in a circle of 10 m in radius under his control. Despite his Class B abilities, the White Shirt Pro's power was still unmatchable to Nye Ting's. When the rubble tornado drew close, Nye Ting suddenly raised his blade and swung it down gently. In the next instant, he was still steady like a rock. In his resonance with nature, the spirit chi in the area was actually locked in place. Without any contact, the tornado split up from the center by itself. Despite taking no extra action, Nye Ting's blade energy was already in the formation. Even the commoners on site could feel a sword hanging over their heads. It was like a deity sent from above. Before his sword was out, a gap of more than 20 meters in width suddenly formed on the rubble ground. Then, the man in white threw up a mouthful of blood, unable to use his willpower anymore. In fact, Nye Ting had already severed the foundation of his willpower. It was the true force of a Class A. Some tried to flee. But Nye Ting immediately rose to the sky, shooting through the air like an arrow. The accompanying piercing sound gave a prick to every commoner's eardrums. To him, techniques he had been practicing for years were but the non-essentials, and the sword energy was the exact power he was now after. Through it, he was able to connect himself with the sky and the earth, using nature at his fingertips. Invisible sword energy erupted outwards from Nye Ting, cutting the ground surface below him into pieces. The piles of rubble also collapsed into stone dust. Those Middle Eastern practitioners on the run were soon caught up by Nye Ting's sword energy, which tore their clothes and flesh apart. Blood stained the floor with a gorgeous scarlet. Since their Class B leader was already down, the others were well aware that they had no chance of survival against this enemy. Putting Xian Ting slowly back in his sheath, Nye Ting flew towards the capital. He was confident that other organizations would learn some lessons from this incident. doesn't mean to be happy Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens